Welcome to the Pimp and Pin Podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Pimp and Pin and on Ravelry as Knit Pimp and Pin. And we also have a group in Ravelry called Pimp and Pin. <laughs> uh, today is November the 14th and it is the 40th episode. Um, I have lots of stuff to talk about today. <laughs> I missed last week just because... Last week was last week. So I guess I'm going to start with all of the admin kind of stuff. Um, so just a reminder that the Rainforest Knit Along is still happening. Um, you can find all the information in our Ravelry group. Um, I'll put a link to it down in the description box below here. And that is going until December 31st. So there's still about a month and a half left of that. Um, that Knit Along is for any of our patterns from our newest book, Rainforest Knits, so Kala, Noni, and Olina, um, as well as Mema and Cat Bells, because those were the other two sweater patterns that we released this year. So any of those five patterns, whatever yarn you want, whatever modifications you want to do, there's a chat thread, and then there's a finished object thread, and there is a finished object in there. So I think someone did the Kala, and it's beautiful. So you should go check that out. Um, there are going to be prizes. Um, last week I showed some yarn that's going to be, um, part of that prize. I was also, um, I did a trunk show at 88 Stitches this past weekend and, um, I, Sue was kind enough to donate a copy of Making. So this is, um, issue eight, which is The Forest. Um, which is quite appropriate. <laughs> so this has, it's not just knitting, it's all sorts of crafts. There's like rug hooking and weaving and sewing and all sorts of things. There's some super, super cute things in there. And this, this looks lovely. It's like a tree ring shawl. Super cool. So thank you very much to Sue for donating um, a copy of this book. So um, when I pick a winner, sometime in January um, for the knit along from the finished object thread. You'll get a copy of that book, some yarn from Sassy Strings and some other fun things that I'm gonna throw in there. <laughs> um, speaking of knit alongs, I think I'm going to start a another one. <laughs> Cause now that I'm like, podcasting regularly and doing weekly thing. I don't know. I'm just very into like everything right now. So let's start another knit along. <laughs> um, this one's going to be all about mini skeins. Um, so this is my wintertime mini along. Um, this is going to run a little bit longer. This is going to run until January 31st, maybe early February. Mm, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, and it's going to be basically anything made with minis <laughs> um, or small bits of many yarns. It doesn't have to specifically be mini skeins like a set or anything that you, you got in mini skein form, um, but really any project with um, multiple tiny bits of yarn. <laughs> um, I actually have a bundle on Ravelry of projects that are all mini skein um, projects. I kind of made the bundle when I was doing this, um, the swaps, the mini skein swaps, um, in case people didn't know, hey, what the heck do I do with these minis now that I have them? I have a whole bundle full of amazing patterns um, for you to browse through and get ideas. Um, whips are going to be okay because um, I know um, I know some people just got their um, mini skein sets from me so I would like those people to be able to participate so you can um, have whips be reasonable if it's like 90% done maybe cast on something else <laughs> um and there was one more thing I was gonna say oh yeah and advents I figured if I start now um advents are gonna be coming out in a couple weeks so people are gonna be getting mini schemes from those and doing all sorts of fun 
super fun holiday knitting um, with that. I think I'm gonna put a minimum on it of like, I don't know, like 30 grams, 40 grams or something like that. So, um, so things like maybe Christmas ornaments won't count singly, but if you had like a set of three, maybe it would. I don't know, I haven't really written all the rules down yet. I have some rough notes, but um, I'll make the actual rules and put them all on Ravelry. I, yeah, I think this one's gonna be really fun. <laughs> because, especially because, I just came out with a new pattern um, with my ice skins. If you watch the podcast regularly or follow me on Instagram, you probably would have seen these already. Um, but these are the Sprocket Socks. And this is a pattern I made. Um, I made this pattern specifically for the um, indie mini sock swap that I do. For more, if you're curious about what that is, because I mention it quite often, if you're curious about what it is, um, there is, if you go to our website, there's a page that explains exactly what it is. Um, I've gotten questions already about when I'm going to be doing the next one, and I don't know exactly, probably sometime in the spring, not any time before Christmas or right now or anything. <laughs> Anyways, so I designed this pattern to go with, um, with that swap. And this is made with a set of five 20 gram mini skeins. There's a pair, there's two of them. <laughs> And these are called the sprocket socks. They're top down and in the round. Um, mine I made with an afterthought heel, but the pattern um, in the pattern there's a um, instructions for a short roll heel if you don't already have the afterthought heel pattern because you do have to purchase it separately. It's a dollar, totally worth it. It's my favorite heel. <laughs> if you haven't uh, if you haven't tried it already or haven't bought it already. Um, you can do that, but there's also instructions in the pattern for a short row heel, which produces a similar, um, similar look, very similar. And um, yeah, and then so these little bits here, I'll put it so you can actually see. This color work, when you change colors, is actually done by slipping stitches. So it's not um, fairly stranded knitting. It is. Um, mosaic knitting so you're just slipping stitches which is and switching colors to make the the color change patterns you also um I kind of did two sets of instructions for this pattern there's the line by line pattern that gives you where to do the color changes what colors to change to specifically for using with like a five set um set or a set of five colors as I have here and that will make the exact sock <laughs> um, I also, because I was having a really hard time deciding what style of instructions to do, like do I do a recipe where people can kind of use the pattern to use what they have to make the socks, or do I do a line by line and give, because I know lots of people do like just having everything written out for them. So I did both. Um, so there you'll have the line by line instructions to get a pair exactly like this, or there's the more condensed pattern for, um, you know, if you're using more or less colors, or if you're just using scraps and not repeating colors at all. Um, <laughs> so there's, yeah, there's kind of two separate sets of instructions in the same PDF. And there was one more thing I was gonna say about these. Of course, I can't remember. I didn't write it down on my sheet. I think I thought of it halfway <laughs> as I was talking. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Okay, I don't remember. But anyway, so this would be the perfect project <laughs> for the mini skein. Um, knit along. Mid winter time, knit along thing. Oh, this is gonna bother me. I knew there was something else that I was gonna say about them, but I can't remember. I'm actually gonna start another pair and I'm gonna start these on December 1st because I'm also gonna double dip in, well, I mean, I can't enter my own knit along. <laughs> but I did make myself a set when I um, made the swaps. And so I'm gonna be making another pair. Start, I think I'm gonna cast them on on December 1st and they're gonna be my Christmas socks. I'm very excited. I don't know if you can see how sparkly this is, but it's crazy sparkly. So that's gonna be my entry. 
minute long, even though, of course, I'm not gonna enter my own yellow. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So one more thing that I was gonna do last week and I didn't, and so I'm gonna do this week, is I'm having a giveaway. And so this giveaway is going to be the uh, Knitting BFF giveaway. <laughs> so it's actually, you get two prizes. So you get a prize for yourself and for your Knitting BFF. So a prize for you and a friend. Um, this is all of my favorite things. <laughs> Who does that? Does Oprah do it? Or my favorite things? Or is that Ellen? I can't remember. Anyways. <laughs> So you're gonna get, the winner of this giveaway is gonna get two of these sets. So I'm only gonna show one because they're gonna be identical, um, but you're gonna get two. Or like I can send one to you and one to your friend if you don't live near each other, that's fine too. So uh, first of all, you're gonna get one of these project bags. Um, these are some vinyl project bags that I've made um, in the brown faux, I don't know, what this is supposed to look like, <laughs> some sort of animal. Um, so you're gonna get and two of these and they're just lined in black and they have, um, they're the perfect sock sack. So I always have, I have one too. Um, I always have a pair of socks in this bag pretty much at all times. So two of these, um, also these measuring tapes, um, keychain measuring tapes and they're metal, which is awesome. They're pretty like, they're sturdy. Um, these are, I have a couple of these like scattered around in project bags and stuff. And my favorite thing about them is they don't stretch because they're metal <laughs> and they're tiny and cute. Also a set of um, rose gold stitch markers. And then one of these, um, needle cases so these are wooden darning needle cases oh this one they will have needles in them but um yeah they just like that this is also always i have a couple run around in my knitting bags um so you'll get to choose your colors either the light wood or the dark wood and then a set of vintage inspired scissors. So these aren't actually old, they're new, but they're made to look old. And yeah, so that's gonna be the prize. So a total like knitters toolkit for you and your BFF. <laughs> Sorry, they were in a box and it's hard to close the box. So yeah, um, sock sack, scissors, Needle cases, stitch markers, and measuring tape. Two of those, one for you, one for a friend. Um, and all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel um, and comment below with the answer to this question. Uh, where is your favorite place to knit with your knitting BFF? So I know lots of people don't live close together. So whether that be on Skype or at a coffee shop or at your knit group or wherever, wherever, you know, it could be, I don't know. I, my favorite place to knit right now is on Sam's couch because it folds out like basically into a bed. <laughs> so we just hang out there all morning and knit on her giant couch with all of her animals and it's great. So yeah, just um, comment below and make sure you are a subscriber to enter to win those. I guess it's almost been 15 minutes. So it's probably time to talk about some actual knitting, maybe? <laughs> and I didn't have any finished objects, but then this morning, um, yesterday, I signed up for the um, Disney Plus trial thing. And so I most definitely watched Never Been Kissed this morning and finished this. <laughs> uh, I actually didn't, mo I didn't knit most of this. This was something um, that Sam had started. 
she hosts the Hand Me My Dating podcast, and she started this in like four years ago. She said she started it in January of 2016. She was going to make it into a cowl and like a kind of doubled wraparound cowl. Um, and it was her car project. So it just sat in her car for in case she ever forgot her knitting and like it's been sitting in her car for four years. So we were talking about um, just kind of getting rid of those things, <laughs> you know, the ones that you're not gonna finish or even if you do finish them, you're not gonna wear them anyways. Like she was saying she, she likes this, but she realizes now like her style has changed in the past four years. Of course, your colors change, your, your, what you wear changes. And um, so she realized that even if she does finish it, which there's a very low, low chance that she even would finish it. She would never wear it anyway, so what's the point? So she was literally just gonna throw it, toss it. And so she pulled it out to show it to me. And I was like, oh, I could just finish that and make a tiny cowl for Georgia. So that's what I did. <laughs> so she did all, all of it, <laughs> pretty much. All I did was put the ribbing on either end. So she knit it as just a big tube, striping, and I think this is Knit Picks Chroma. I don't know the colorways. I didn't pick them. <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, so just these stripes, and I think George is really gonna love this. Her favorite color combo is pink and blue. Um, so this is just perfect. She's also been um, stealing my Birds and Chips cowl quite often. I think she just really likes just I mean, she's five, so scarves and like things like that, they're hard, they're hard to keep on, they're hard to get on, and um, she just really likes being able to pull it over and, and have a scarf. So I just like, I think Sam's intention was to have it like this and go around, um, but I just threw the ribbing on and it's gonna be a little cowl like that. How cute is that? I'm probably gonna make a little matching hat and stuff too, so maybe some missions. I don't know. I think that would be really cute. She doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> so I think she's going to be very, very excited. I'll take a picture of her when she, when she actually gets it. Um, yeah, so that's my finished thing. Uh, oh, I guess I'll talk about what I'm wearing. Uh, this is one of my patterns from a while ago, last year. Um, it's the Ironwood hat. Uh, it uses sweet fiber cashmerino, I think it's DK worsted, in the sequoia colorway. Um, it's beautiful, deep, rich, glowy red. Um, and then I just have patterns of this kind of arrows and uh, it's one of my favorites. I actually just put the pom-pom on today <laughs> um, and I never really wore it before. And now I just, I just think the pom-pom makes it, it just makes it so much better. It makes it, I don't know slouch better? I don't know. Um, but I feel like now with a pom-pom I'll wear it, wear it way more often, which is a good and a bad thing because this is also a design sample. <laughs> oh well, I can always make another one if I need to. Um, for works in progress, I have things. I am not going to show you the fiddly shawl that I'm working on. It's getting really big and the more I work on it and the bigger it gets, the more in love with it I am. But right now it's kind of at the point where it's a wrap and it's really just repeating the same thing over and over again. So I could show it to you, but it's gonna, to you, it's probably just gonna look the same as it did the past couple weeks. So you know what the pattern looks like. If you don't, you can watch last week's episode and you will see it. Just take that, add about this much. <laughs> and that's what it looks like this week. Um, yeah, I'm really loving how that's coming along, but I'm, I'm just not gonna show it until it gets a little further, until it gets a little more interesting. I do have some progress on lots of other things though. So, this is Justin's sweater. <laughs> this is a sweater I'm knitting for Justin um, out of Drops Nord in the orange, I think it's 11 or something, orange mix something or other and I finished up to the shoulders and I did block it um so I have it has been blocked what I want him to do is just to try it on and like not just try it on but wear it around for a little while because he was saying 
um, like before I start to do the collar and the, and the sleeves and something, I want to make sure that that's sitting correctly. He was also saying that like in the waist area, it might be a little tight, like not that it's tight, but you know, I just don't want it to be too tight that he won't wear it. <laughs> it needs to have like a little bit of room. And so I told him to, to just wear it around for like a day at, in the house. And if there's anything that needs to be changed, then I can change it before I, you know, before I actually do the hem and something. Because I'll only have to, if he wants it bigger at the bottom, I'll really only have to take it back this much, maybe up to here. Like eight stitches would be here. So it's really not that big a deal. And if I finish it and it's too tight, I know he's not gonna wear it. So I'd rather him just be really sure <laughs> that it's gonna be okay before, um, before I actually start working on it again. And um, yeah, so I worked, we finished, I can't remember where I was. Oh, was I here? Oh, that's where my last stitch marker was. So yeah, I guess I did a lot of work on it these past two weeks. Um, it's definitely going much quicker than his last sweater. Um, a nicer yarn to work with and it's like a DK weight. So obviously it's going much faster. Um, yeah, so I just worked in the round up until the underarms and then I split, did some decreasing. Um, went for the front. I kind of made this panel, I cast off a couple stitches in the middle here because this is gonna be like a Henley. So I'm gonna put a like button band up here. And then I just used a three needle bind off for the, did I do some short row shaping? Ah, a little bit in the back. And then I um, just did a three needle bind off for the shoulders. So yeah, that is just waiting for him to wear it around a bit. <laughs> and then I'll, probably finish that up really quick because then it's just the sleeves and the finishing stuff. But it's done. <laughs> and then I get to start Georgia's. <laughs> That's gonna be so cute with the matching little sweaters. Another thing that I've been putting a lot of work into the past couple weeks, two weeks I guess, has been my underwing mitts. And this is a pattern by Erica Hauser. And I'm making them out of La Mana Como in color three and seven. And so there is one of them. And there is half of the second one. So they're just about there, done. They're getting there. I thought, I thought maybe like by the time I was finished the first one, I would be over it and like <laughs> not as excited about it. But I'm still very excited about it. These are have been really fun to work on. It's my first color work um, like this before. And I'm really, really enjoying it. They fit really nicely already. I haven't blocked them yet, but I think that they'll just look even better. I think I might tighten, we'll see how it goes after I block them, but I might tighten up this cast off just a little bit so that they kind of hug my, <laughs> it sounds weird, kind of hug my knuckles a little bit more. Um, while I was at 88 Stitches doing the trunk show, I also picked up some more of this stuff. <laughs> I I limited myself a little bit while I was there because I'm I'm sitting there for five hours talking to people and talking about yarn and um, it was really really fun and so I I made a deal with myself that I knew I was going to come home with something because it's very hard for me to go to a yarn store and not um, but. I limited myself to like one thing. So I think this is gonna be another pair of color work something, maybe some mittens or something. Um, but I got two of these kind of darker grays, one of the light, and then one of this beautiful turquoise. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about those. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna make with them yet, but it was either gonna be that or there was like a sweater. They just had this perfect little like box of color and it was this copper and this kind of deep green and then this peachy, pinky colors. I don't know, but 
that would have made a beautiful color work sweater too. But I'm trying not to buy sweater quantities of yarn unless I actually have a sweater in mind for it because I have yarn for sweaters. So I need to make those sweaters first before I start buying more yarn. Yarn will always be there. But I couldn't pass up some more of this stuff. And they have it in tweed. So I, I afterwards I sent Sue uh, a message on Instagram because I saw that they had this in tweed. Sue, we need to get it. <laughs> so she is, I think. Um, anyways. Yes, so these will be done. This will be done soon, I think. I'm very excited to be able to wear these. I have another half finished object too. And I don't think, oh, that's the wrong one. I don't think you've seen these yet. Maybe I talked about them. I can't remember, I should know these things. <laughs> My needles are breaking everything. Okay, so um, this is a sock. This is the blueberry waffle sock. I can't remember who designed it, but I do know that it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's kind of, I um, can't remember what kind of heel that it has. I just used the pattern from it because I've done them before. I know they fit well. I like that how they stretch a lot, um, but are a little bit interesting. Uh, this yarn is uh, Katya yarn in a box. And it comes in, it comes in a little box, and it comes in two gradient 50 gram skeins. Now, it starts with like all solid blue, um, or ends depending on how you knit your socks. I knit mine top down. But um, it starts with a solid blue, but I, I thought that like these are gonna be a present. And I wanted, I really like the red, but I also didn't want to start with the dark because <laughs> I wanted the dark on the bottom and the blue on the top. Uh, so I I chopped off a whole like section because you can see the yarn kind of um, like it's plied and then every once in a while a new color will kind of be introduced. So it's like gradient stripes almost. It's really cool. Um, yeah, but I didn't, 50 grams is a lot <laughs> for a single sock. So I um, cut off the solid blue and then I didn't get to the solid dark. So I think it worked out pretty well. Um, I've started a little bit on the second one, but I've just cast it on because when you finish one sock, you just cast on the second one immediately after. <laughs> That's the rule. I like how this yarn looks. I like how it feels. I'm not a huge fan of how it knits. <laughs> it's um, very it's kind of splitty. And if you're not used to that, it can be a little tricky to like make sure you're catching all the things. You just have to pay a little bit more attention. It's just very different from say, um, you know, like a, a typical Merino hand dyed yarn that's super lovely this is just it's just different they're just different things it's still great to work with if you realize what you're getting into <laughs> and i did so i was okay with with um i'm okay with working with splitty yarn it kind of reminds me of like hedgehog sock um but like springier bouncier it's nicer than hedgehog sock <laughs> I don't particularly like that, but um, I really do like the, the finished socks. So I have one more to go. This is gonna be a Christmas present. It's also my November sock for the Grocery Girls Sock Bash. Um, that's all the things, I think. Yeah, yeah, because I'm doing my, um, I mean, aside from the, the little cowl that I finished for Georgia, I'm doing the three project capsule knitting. I think that's also why I didn't, um, why I didn't podcast last week is because I felt like I didn't have a lot to talk about, except now this week, I feel like I have a ton to talk about. Um, oh yeah, and because this is something Sam and I were talking about too, because she's kind of the one who came up with this idea um, and I, 
totally just stole it. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I think it's um, a great way to kind of keep on track with projects, still have interesting things to do, but not feel like you have to cast things on all the time. Um, one kind of nice thing over the weekend, I wasn't feeling too great um, over the weekend. Saturday, I literally just sat on the couch and watched TV. I, I wasn't, I don't know, it felt like I was getting the flu except only how the flu makes your body feel. <laughs> so I don't know, it was really weird. I just like, I just wanted to sit on the couch and watch TV. And I'm never like just watching TV. I'm always doing something else, but that's all I did on Saturday. And Justin came home and he's like, oh, like, what did you do today? I was like, nothing. I didn't even knit. He's like, oh, you must really be feeling bad. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> um, but there was something about this capsule knitting too, as like there's, I don't know if, if you if you knit a lot and if you are like knitting sweaters and things and sometimes it can feel um, pressure to finish things or to like always be knitting or always be making something or always be doing something. It was kind of nice on Saturday to like not <laughs> do anything <laughs> like that and be okay with that. Um, and I don't know, with these three projects, like there was just a time over the weekend, like on Sunday I was feeling better, but I still didn't knit because I just wasn't really feeling that inspired by any of the three projects I had. And I knew I didn't, or four I guess, because the socks were on two. And I knew that I didn't want to cast on anything new. Um, I just didn't really feel like knitting any anything. <laughs> and so I didn't. Um, I was gonna save this for winter, but I'm glad that I didn't. But I did pretty much the majority of, over the past two weeks, I've pretty much finished my cross stitch kit and that I got at Knit City. So just some pretty little flowers. I think all I have left to do are a bunch of French knots here and a bunch of French knots there and then it's pretty much done. And then like they, because I got this kit from um, June Bug, oh, let's see. Junebug and Darlin. It's the Amethyst Floral Cross Stitch Pattern. Um, and it comes with everything. It comes with the charts, it comes with instructions, it comes with the hoop and the thread and everything you need. And then it also comes with all of the like finishing materials. So it has some batting and some felt. And so you kind of, I've never done this before, so I'm, I'm excited to get to this part too, but then you kind of fold it in and, um, and make it pretty. <laughs> so I worked on that. Um, and that was, that was really nice because it's, um, I used to cross stitch a lot when I was younger and it was nice to just, um, have a, have something different other than knitting to work on and not feel like, I don't know, kind of not feel bad about it. Just do, just do something fun. So I might, um, after I'm done this, since I'm into it, I went to Michael's the other day and I got, um, some more, uh, cloth and I got some, I mean, I have lots of floss but I got because I was at Michael's and looking at it some sparkly red <laughs> so I think I'm gonna find some like tiny hoops and do some Christmas ornaments or something I think that would be fun um George is doing a she has a little fox um embroidery kit that she's doing um so I think that's something nice that we can kind of work on at the same time what else? Um, nothing really else craft related, I don't think. Um, this weekend we are going to, this weekend I get to go to Galliano, which is really fun. Um, Galliano is an island um, kind of in between Vancouver Island and the mainland, and I've never been there before, so it's going to be very exciting. Um, the ladies who put on Knit City do like knitting retreats there and so I'm going on Sunday to be part of like a mini pop-up market that they have um so Justin George and I are gonna take the ferry together and then I'm gonna go do my thing for an hour or two and then we're gonna spend the rest of the day um kind of exploring the island so that's gonna be really fun I've yeah I mean I haven't really spent a lot of time on the islands or the coast, the ferry is expensive. <laughs> That's really it. Like the ferry is really expensive um, for the three of us to get across and back. 
was like $150. And that's not including like the gas to get to the ferry because the ferry is also an hour away. So that's not including any of that. That's just to get on the ferry. <laughs> and like we could have, I guess you can like walk on and stuff, but no, because we want to actually like be able to explore the island. And anyways, ferries are too expensive, but I'm very excited to be going. <laughs> and it's kind of a good excuse to, like I was really excited because it's not something that we would have spent the money on otherwise. Like we would never just go hop on the ferry and go to the island and come back. And like, that's just not something that we would do. Um, but it's nice to have the excuse to have this thing that I'm gonna go and do. And then, you know, just to get us out there. Um, I think it's gonna be really fun. So that's gonna be a super fun day. Um, I've also been really heavy into um, home improvements <laughs> and, cleaning up my house and um putting up we got an early we got an early Christmas present from my in-laws they got us one of those like um entryway what do they call it like a coat tree thing I don't know it's like a bench and then it has this thing and coat racks and a little shelf on top it's exactly what I have been wanting for the entryway forever but I just could never it's one of those things I just because we're in the apartment and because we're always looking to move kind of and like for the past five years we've been here but also not here like when we moved in we we're like okay we'll stay here for a year and then we'll you know move out five years later <laughs> so it's always something that I've wanted for the entryway and just never wanted to spend the money on so it's nice when we when we get gifts like that it's absolutely perfect it's always spent a day putting that together and then because that was new and in the entryway then I cleaned out all of our coats and like all of our um all of our uh, accessories and things like that also in that little hallway is where our washing machine is and if you heard about our washing machine saga like we had to take the door off and because <laughs> it's a small apartment and we couldn't find we literally couldn't find a washing machine the right size the specific size of the one that we had um, to fit in there. So we found one that almost worked, but we had to take the door off. So I did end up, I got a curtain and so I put the curtain up. So now that looks way nicer. Um, and I feel like that's just kind of, uh, made me want to do the whole house. I don't think we're going to paint or anything, but I bought some shelves at Ikea last time I was there. So I'm going to put some shelves up. I have like a hanger for Justin's guitar. So I'm going to hang that up on the wall and I have a whole big idea for our pantry. Our pantry, it's really like a... <laughs> our pantry right now is a gray um, filing cabinet and an antique um, like set of dresser, dresser drawers um, in the middle of our hallway on the way to the kitchen. <laughs> but I have a whole idea to like redo that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of been my, my project has been organizing. I have a car full of stuff that I have to take to the thrift store today, which always feels really nice. Um, and I'm just kind of slowly going through everything and I want everything out of my house. <laughs> I feel like this happens to me every year because it's, uh, what day is it? It's middle of November, November 14th. My rule, my Christmas rule is I don't set up the tree until December 1st. Um, and I'm very excited to do that, but I also want the space to be ready. Cause so like I'm planning where the tree is going to go and like all the different things that have to happen and clean and be organized and like lots of stuff comes into your house at Christmas time. So I want to get rid of the stuff that we don't use so that we can make room for the stuff that we get and things like that. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of been my project recently, and I'm very cool with that. <laughs> I like my house way more in the wintertime. It's very cozy, um, and in the summertime, it's, I don't know, dark and depressing, and I just want to go outside, and I can't. <laughs> Anyways, ramble on. That's it. So... Reminders, Rainforest Knit Along until December 31st. New Knit Along um, is happening. Find all the information down below. That's the wintertime mini along. 
Um, sprocket socks are on Ravelry. You can find them on Ravelry. And then the um, Knitting BFF giveaway. So tell me where your favorite place to knit with your BFF is. <laughs> Make sure you are also subscribed um, to the podcast. And that's it for today. Um, hopefully I'll have some like, I think, I think this week will be the week of kind of finishing up these projects or these, the mittens at least, I think I'm going to get done this week and then I'll just have the wrap and the, um, and the sweater. And then I get to start my new knitting capsule. So that's going to be very exciting. That will be a long episode. I'm sure I'm still not a hundred percent. What the, okay. The fun thing about this like knitting capsule thing is while I'm working on these three projects that I am excited to have, I also get to plan out my next three. And so like, those are constantly changing because it's kind of, you want a good mix of projects so that you have kind of something to work on for everything. And that's why I, I stopped working. What did I stop working on? No, that's why I did Justin's sweater so fast was because I wanted to get, I kind of wanted to get the majority of that done first so that I'm not just left with that sweater at the end of, you know, after the other two projects have, have been finished, you know what I mean? So I wanted to finish that first so that I could like finish them all up kind of at the same time. I don't know, it, it's a really neat way to like keep you kind of interested in the projects that you have and like a little bit more calculated about, yes, I'm having a super fun time working on these, but when I'm done these, then I only have these two projects to work on. Or when I finish that wrap, then I won't have anything to take with me to knit night or like, you know, so, so you kind of have to be a little more careful with what you knit. I don't know. It's kind of neat. Um, I definitely encourage you to try it, especially if you have problems. I mean, I've never really had this problem of too many works in progress because I just, I, the, I used to be a very monogamous knitter. So um, having more than three or four, I guess, has never been, been too much of a problem for me, but like finishing them all at the same time is kind of um, very intriguing. <laughs> so if you, especially if you're someone who has a lot of whips and things like that, uh, you, should, you should try it. It's really cool. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just rambled again. Um, <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, have a good day. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, I really appreciate you coming back and um, supporting the channel. And I hope you join the knit alongs. And if you're a new viewer and you've lasted this long, thank you so much for uh, taking a chance. I don't know. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. See you next week.